I'm Draco Self-Important, and I think you should listen to me. I also think you should like and subscribe. That's Vash. He may or may not stay there, but enjoy the adorable cat content regardless. Um, so, if you're new here, uh, I like to react to troll comments. Um, I am someone who's always been incredibly curious about religion. Um, all religions, like all of them ever, it's just a thing that fascinates me because it's a thing that happens among humans of all cultures everywhere. Like, it's, it's just, it fascinates me. How do you pick one? You know, how do you, how do you know that that's the one, right? Like, it's always, I've tried on many a religion in my day. I'm still investigating different religions. I'm learning more about religions that I know shit about, you know? So, like, I am open for the information, right? I would appreciate if the information were presented to me in a way that wasn't shitty. Um, this particular person has been pretty reasonable in their disagreeing with my existence. That's a ridiculous sentence to fucking say. Um, they don't think that my being gay or trans or whatever is like a part of who I am. I think they think that it's like a decision that I make each day when I wake up in the morning or something. I don't fucking know. Um, but apparently the people who think they can throw the fucking Bible at me um, think that I have some sort of choice in like who I am as a human and how my brain works and shit. Um, you know, we can get into the theories about like how people become trans or gay or whatever and hormones and utero and blah, 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 blah. No. What I'm going to do right now um, is try to be even handed and serious. I'm probably still going to say some snarky shit because I'm a bitch and I'm sorry and it's just who I am as a human. But. I'm going to try to not fly off the handle and scream. Um, because what I did was take the... Um, so what happened was um, I had someone comment on a video where I was talking about Leviticus because I had what turned out to be an actual child who I blocked and then stopped arguing with because I'm not here for children. Um who was saying that Leviticus uh, says that homosexuality was wrong. And I was like, bro, do you shave? Like, what about the other 75 things that Leviticus says is wrong or are wrong? I can't use um, words correctly, apparently. Um, you know, do you, do you do those things? Like, why are you holding me to this one thing? Um, and then he went on to, you know, talk about like eating ass and shit. And I'm like, ah, like have finding out after the fact that that was a child, Jesus fucking Christ. I half think that he just said that to try to be like gross and weird. I'm not taking the chance. This is not a space for children. Hi, hello. I mark it not for kids. I don't want to have it like full on age restricted because like at some point I'd like to have an ad. Monitor your kids online. It's not my fucking job. Ta-da! Like if your kids can't handle my very existence without like he's backwards. So I feel weird being um, uncentered. Um, if your ki kids can't handle my very existence without like transing or gaying or whatever, then I feel like you're not doing a great job as a parent conveying the values that you're trying to convey. And or maybe these are things that people don't actually like pick. But we'll get into what God says about it. So, um, I, this person was like, but the Bible does say that homosexuality was wrong. And I'm like, okay, but where? And they said Leviticus. And I was like, Jan, can you give me something else? And then they did. So they gave me a couple of different passages. And I mean, like one or two lines out of entire fucking books. Now, I, as the not a fucking moron that I am, um, 
decided to read more than literally just the lines that they gave me and like figure out the context of what I was reading. So what we're reading is a lot of letters from Paul to a lot of fucking places and people about like shit that's going down and shit that he thinks isn't chill in like the whole spreading of Christianity front, right? This is New Testament shit, so I am not going to sit here and be like, Christians don't have to follow it, right? Like, this is the shit that I've been asking for the entire time. Give me shit in the New Testament that makes you fucking believe this. Because I would like to see what it is. Because here's the thing, for me personally, way more than, like, trying to prove people wrong or whatever, I've always wanted to understand how the Christians in my life that are queer are Christian because it has been a thing that like no one has ever taken the time to like sit down and break down because like my instant aversion does not make me seem receptive I assume and or people don't feel like they need to justify their fucking religion to me because I don't make them feel like they need to justify their fucking religion to me because <laughs> like you've heard me say it a million times you can believe whatever the fuck you want if you're not trying to shove it down my fucking throat cool fucking story land of the free home of the brave i see no bravery and i see people trying to curtail my freedom welcome to the right wing ladies and gentlemen i'm here on the left telling you you can get laid and also be who you are as a person da -da -da. um the right wing sucks the left is where it's at please god understand that we're not trying to get free shit we're trying to have people have a decent quality of life. There is a fucking gnat, and it is ruining my life. Uh, okay. So, keep in mind, all of this is written by the same dude. So, you cannot, supposedly, I don't, like, listen, the historical, um, we're, okay. I've said before, I do not believe in a historical Jesus. I have not been presented with evidence that, like, convinces me. I've heard decades to centuries between the time that he existed versus when they started writing about him. I've not done enough research to, like, net, like I've not done a paper on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, as a non-Christian, right, and a um, was baptized Catholic out of just in case because my parents ridiculous humans um, sorry my allergies are like I, I don't uh, uh, Jesus I've switched to energy drink to try to uh, I don't know not fall asleep at almost 11 p.m. while rambling while I'm on a roll. Um, <laughs> it's just always been something that, like, I have wanted to understand how, you know, how you reconcile these things. And so I have people on this channel who are, like, yelling at me and telling me, which, again, no one has given me anything about gender at all. Everything I've been provided with is homosexuality or not even, and um, we'll get to that. Um, no one has given me anything that says I can't be trans. I've been told by a lot of Christians that I'm being sinful or, uh, you know, like, whatever, whatever, but no one has actually given me anything. So, yeah. Um, but to address uh, what we have been given from Paul in the New Testament. We're going to go in order that it appears in the Bible. I marked this off with paper towels because I grabbed whatever was closest. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, we've got Romans. Uh, I'm supposed to be quoting 26, 27. Romans 1, 26, 27. So I'm going to read you exactly what I was given, 
And then we're going to talk about Romans. So, out of context, here we go. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Let me just read the opener of that again. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. So just based on literally the first fucking thing you gave me with no other context, God made people gay as a punishment Because God gave them over to shameful lust. God gave them over. What the fuck does that mean to you? God gave them over. What does that mean? This is Paul, right, talking about his visit to Rome. This is Paul lamenting that the Romans aren't conforming with Christian ideals. None of this is what Christ said. And also, he's attributing these people like, oh, well, they didn't worship the extra jealous fucking God that we have, so God made them gay so that they would be punished about it. And this is somehow supposed to be my problem. This is supposed to be my problem, right? God makes people gay, and it's supposed to be my problem. We're going to get there, because I'm going to read all your shit, and then I'm going to come back to my shit and wrap this all up, and how I realized that um, the, the people in my life uh, who are Christian and queer can do that, and it, like, makes sense, right? So... Paul's mad that people aren't Christian. Paul's mad that people be doing gay shit because people always been doing gay shit. And Paul thinks that it's because God is punishing them by making them want to do gay shit. So, um, my, um, this is, please explain to me how God making me gay is my problem. Because the very first thing you gave me is God making people gay. Just like the shit that the last fucking dude gave me was fucking a man birthing a woman. <laughs> telling me men can't have children and then explaining to me that the first woman came from the first man. And yeah, okay, cool, bro. Cool story. Um, all right. Da, da, da. So then we get to Corinthians. Oh, you did give these to me in order in the Bible. Cool. I just have to backtrack to get to the thing that I want to talk about because it's also in Corinthians. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Corinthians 6, 9. Uh, hold on. Let me look because I don't remember what the fuck. Oh, oh, oh. We're going to keep reading after your thing. That's how we get to the uh, your Corinthian shit. Doesn't make sense. I remember now. Corinthians uh, 6 9. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not be deceived? Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Um, okay, so let's just stop there. I think I, I read to the end of the sentence, but the like the six nine ends in the middle of the sentence. Because of course it does, because thieves and the greedy and drunkards shouldn't be included with the gay shit. Why do they number it like this? I don't understand. Um, okay, so. 
<sighs> Sexually immoral. Right. Okay. Um, can we talk about what you do behind closed doors and then you can start judging me? Because, oh God, the people who make these comments. Adulterers. Hey, how about premarital sex, yo? Because all adultery is is sex outside of marriage. It doesn't matter what variety of outside that is. If it's before, if it's you're married but someone else, if it's like you're not married, they're married, they're... I don't hear you people railing against all the fucking dudes online talking about how they're getting laid, but for some reason, being a homo is a fucking problem. Because you think it's gross. That's all. Let's keep on reading, though. Uh, some of you were... Oh, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sacrificed, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirits of God. So let's keep in mind that this is after God makes people gay, he like washes them of the sins of this shit, right? Then we get on, we're still in um, Corinthians, we're now at 612, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and will raise us also. Do you not know that our bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body? For it is said, the two become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. So what I read that to say is you can do whatever you want, but you'd be way better off if you're gay with me than if you're gay with other humans. Or committing adultery in the form of engaging with prostitutes, prostitutes, sex workers, you know, right? Because those are put at equal weight here. Like, do you put those things at equal weight in your head? People having premarital sex, people engaging with sex workers, and fucking queers. Also, again, nothing about this has anything to do with gender. No one has given me any of that. We're just addressing the gay, which, as far as you people are concerned, I guess I'm not even. So I guess I'm just standing up for others. I don't fucking know. I like dick. Mm. Um, and I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got, the first thing you give me is uh, God made people gay because he was mad at them and wanted them to suffer about it. And that's somehow supposed to be my problem. Because, like, you don't think that he's still doing that as some sort of fucking punishment? Like, if, if the, like, the Savior's supposed to come again or whatever, like, isn't it, isn't it supposed to be to wash away some other sins? Don't you think that if God was, like, randomly punishing people for not believing then by making them fucking homos, that he'd be, like, and you think the solution is that I'm supposed to believe the dudes who are complete and total fucking assholes to me about it and fucking... Uh-huh. I'm not supposed to believe the doctors, the scientists. No, no, no. See, this is where we get into the my respect for other religions and Buddhism, for example, and the, like, uh, believing truth above religious texts, regardless of how old or revered they are, because the truth is the truth. Yeah. The truth should be revered among all else, and, you know, sometimes... 
your understanding of things changes, and that's totally reasonable. But your inability to accept that isn't. So then we get to, uh, what did you give me? You gave me Timothy something. Hold on, let me see. So I'm getting exactly, you gave me Timothy 1.10. So let me read exactly what you gave me. For adulterers and perverts, the slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which he entrusted me. One. That doesn't even say homosexuals. The other shit did. You're just giving me perverts. You and I have very different ideas of what a pervert is. Um, see, for me, perverts are people who involve uh, unconsenting people or not adults because children can't consent, right? For me, perverts are people who do shit without getting the permission of the people that they're involving in their shit, right? So um, that's not, yeah. Everything else that you've given me actually said homosexuality. But let's take a little look-see at Timothy, because this is Paul writing a letter to Timothy, right? So this is Paul talking about uh, false teachers. So, I urge you, when I went to Macedonia, stay there and you festus, I'm bad at the geography, uh, biblical geography especially, so that you may command certain men not to teach false doctrines any longer, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. These promote controversies rather than God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and good conscience and sincere faith. Some have wandered away from these and turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they are so or what they so confidently affirm. We know the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly, the sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for adulterers and perverts, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that conforms to the glorious gospel of the blessed Lord, which he entrusted to me. You gave me half a sentence of Paul saying we need to be teaching these people to be accepting so that we can actually convert people. And you use that to not be accepting. <laughs> We're going to get back to Corinthians we're going to get to the part of Corinthians that Paul wrote about that I would like to point out to you. And the part of Corinthians that has made it make sense to me why all of this shit... <sighs> because you see, Paul starts by saying God makes people gay. He ends by saying we need to be teaching them the gospel so they ungay the shit, right? Um... He says the gospel needs to be taught through love and acceptance in that very same passage, if you'll recall. But let's go to Corinthians for a moment. And because, uh, yeah. I'm going to read from the beginning of uh, Corinthians 1-4 because I don't want to take the shit in the middle of a fucking sentence. It, Yeah. So we're going to just read from the beginning because Corinthians 4.3 is the part that I really am like trying to aim at here, but I'm not going to be a fucking hypocrite and not give it at least a full fucking sentence of context. Feel free to look it up. The Bible is available online for free if you don't have your own paper version sitting on your fucking bookshelf because you were indoctrinated as a child like me. <laughs> so... Um, so then, men ought to regard us as servants of Christ 
and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring the light bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. And at that time, each will receive his praise from God. It was actually, I, I apologize. It was uh, Corinthians uh, 4, 5 actually was the part that the, therefore judge nothing before the appointed time, wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in the darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. See, here's the thing, bro. You gave me a passage that says that God makes people gay. And then uh, you gave me a passage that says that uh, people should stop judging. And then you gave me a passage that says that everything is permissible under God, but not everything is beneficial. And those are not the same thing. Um, and you gave me some shit that says that the word of God is for all of the people who are sinners. So, like, do you think you are portraying what Jesus would like from you to try to get me to the right side. If you are a good Christian with the same values of Jesus, this, as far as I'm concerned, uh, fictional, allegorical fucking character... What, what, like, why, how are you helping here by telling me that, like, my existence is wrong with no fucking context of any of the rest of these books? Did you understand the rest of the context of these books? I don't think that most of the people who are homophobic and use Christianity as the fucking club to beat fucking homos with actually understand what they're supposed to believe. Because if you take any of this shit in context, it's all a bunch of shit that people do all the time. If we're going to talk about greedy swindlers, you better not have fucking voted for Trump. How do you feel about Elon Musk? Adulterers, how do you feel about premarital sex? Come on, man. There's nothing but hypocrisy in people trying to hold others to the standards of a fucking book from 2,000 years ago that specifically says, it's not your fucking job to judge me. So fuck off. Follow your own fucking rules and let your fucking God judge me when the time comes. Because, rest assured, if this shit is real, I am confident that I have made the best decisions that I can possibly make in my life, and I will gladly stand before your fucking God. And I will stand before Jesus and be like, bro, you really should have had people make a better history. Everybody else seemed to actually exist. What the fuck ever, man. And if I'm going to be punished because I didn't believe the shitty fucking history, but I lived my whole life trying to be a good person and do the right thing, oh fucking well. I can only do what I can do with the information that I have at the time, and the information that I have right now involves my fucking brain. So, thank you for giving me something that was actually even remotely pertinent. However, it was completely out of context, and if you gave it any level of context, you're still just a bigot. This is not Christian. This is your bigotry. Christianity is not inherently bigoted because Christianity tells you directly not to fucking judge people. 
It is your job to teach your children appropriate values, just like it is my job to teach my children appropriate values, because being a bigoted piece of shit is something that I absolutely do not want from my children, and it's something that I try to discourage. You can't control other people, including your own children, no matter how much you try, but rest assured... I don't want anything to do with any fucking kids on the internet. Thank you. I find other people's children generally to be incredibly annoying. No offense, I just have no fucking social battery and children are loud and repetitive. So if I don't have, and I've said this since I was forever, if I don't have some kind of emotional connection to that child, I would really just rather not. Like, I can, you know, if it's a friend's kid or family kid or literally if you introduce me to the child, you know? But if we're talking strange kid in a store or a restaurant that is just an abstract child, ah, that's how I think you people think of fucking fags. <laughs> like, you don't think of us as actual people. You just think of us as noise in your fucking environment fucking up your shit. Except all we're trying to do is exist. Just like the kids in the restaurant. Which is why I don't go over to the parents at the restaurant and yell at them for existing with children in public. Because that's a me problem. That's my sensory overload that's a problem. I started yelling. See, Vash was like, you said you weren't going to yell, Dad. I know. I know. He's like, come on, Dad. I'm your emotional support animal. You're being emotionally irrational. <sighs> I don't like it when people hate me that don't fucking know me. I've done so many stupid fucking things in my life. Like, <laughs> there are people in my life who, like, don't like me. And I'm just like, I can't blame you, bro. That was pretty shitty. I'm an asshole. I don't... But fucking strangers... <laughs> That's a very short list, as far as I'm concerned, by the way. Um, but, you know. I tend to be pretty fucking chill. But, again, not a doormat. Also, meow. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He is really interested in making me shut the fuck up, I think is what's happening right now. Please stop yelling at me about it. I know I'm not petting you. I'm not engaging with this. I am because I'm talking to you, but I'm not petting you. <laughs> so. I got something that wasn't complete bullshit, but it was still out of context and ended up to be bullshit in the end. So it was like not bullshit on the surface. Slight scratch. Oh, Jesus. There's the shit of a male cow. Um, yeah. Now I understand why I have queer Christian friends. Thank you for that. Um, otherwise, I'm not convinced that this religion actually has a problem with, like, anyone doing anything, really. Um, because the whole thing just says to, like, live your life, do your best, and, like, God fucking sort it out. And you people can't fucking do that. You people have to try to legislate others when your whole fucking religion says not to do that. Your job is to not be persecuted so that you can live your lives according to your beliefs. Because this book says you're going to be persecuted forever, except that when that turned out not to happen, you decided that not being the ruling class was the same as persecution. It's not. You're not being persecuted. You can believe whatever the fuck you want. But according to your own fucking doctrine, you need to shut the fuck up about it. If I were your brother in Christ, and we had a relationship, and you were concerned for my soul, then by all means. But I'm not, and we don't, and you're not. So, you're just a bigot? Because this says you shouldn't be judging me, and it's not your fucking place. <coughs> it also says God makes people gay, and that everything is permissible. 
if you read like a sentence or two around the very cherry picked half sentences that you gave me because one this is just paul dude did paul make all of christianity cuz all you gave me was the ramblings of paul <coughs> i don't know man maybe all of this is written by paul <coughs> excuse me i've inhaled a cat fur at this point <laughs> The spring shed is happening, and I need to brush them real bad, and I am being punished for not having done so. Um, sorry, I didn't keep it even keeled and not yell. Whoopsie! <laughs> I, it's who I am as a human. Um, I get very upset when people try to use irrational things to um, try to make me feel bad for existing. Be rational or shut the fuck up. <laughs> Your religion says not to judge people. That's all you motherfuckers do. <coughs> the yelling does not help the cop. <coughs> I love you. Be safe. Make good choices before I start coughing again.